but we will, we'll follow up. Um, and now, St. Louis and I are here today in continuing solidarity with the protesters, the advocates, and movements that are actually targeted by surveillance and other law enforcement abuses in this country. Director Ray, I know that you are aware of the FBI's long and sordid history of targeting black protesters and activists. At a hearing before this committee in December of 2017, you characterized the abuses related to COINTELPRO as, quote, one of the darker moments in the FBI's history. It's something we're not proud of, but it is also something we've learned from, end quote. But Director Ray, isn't it true that an FBI agent improperly ran a batch query of unminimized FISA information using the identifiers of 133 individuals arrested in connection with the protests after the murder of George Floyd in 2020? Just a yes or no is fine. Well, I, I, I'm aware of the instance you're talking about, whether or not that correctly describes it or not. I'm not 100% sure. I know it's in the, the most recent uh, Fisk opinion. But I, what I will tell you is that that incident uh, is uh, non-compliance, I consider it unacceptable, uh, and most importantly, most importantly, it predates all of these fixes and corrective measures and reforms that we've put in place, which I think would have prevented it from, from yeah. happening now. Thank you. Uh, and now on to Zero Fox. Isn't it true a firm hired on a $14 million contract um, by the FBI, which we've heard um, um, already today, to monitor social media threats, previously labeled Black Lives Matter activists as threat actors requiring constant surveillance? Yes or no? I'm not sure that's a correct description of the way uh, we do work with Zero Fox, uh, but I don't know that that's a correct description of how we well, do it. So did the, did the FBI hire the firm? Uh, my understanding of Zero Fox is it has a tool which allows us to um, to in certain instances engage in uh, social media searches to prevent threats. So the but, FBI, but the so they weren't hired. Of the well, I, I don't know, again, the, the terms of our arrangement, like whether, you know, whether it's a, a, a retention or, or what, but I'm, I've heard the term Zero Fox before, mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and my general experience is it's usually used uh, in connection with um, preventing violence at a, you know, a, a particular right. critical incident of some sort. Uh, so to the tune of $14 million, though, it, um, there, are, there is reporting um, that uh, threat actors was actually um, what they labeled Black Lives Matter activists, two of whom I know um, very well. And I served uh, more than 400 days on the ground during the Ferguson uprising myself, more than 400 days, many of those days, with those two people that were named um, and who are not violent. Um, isn't it true that the FBI has been actively involved in the law enforcement response to people protesting the Atlanta Public Safety Tr uh, Training Center, a response that has included state charges of domestic terrorism against protesters? Yes or no? <clears throat> well, the, the F our Atlanta division uh, is working uh, in support of our state and local partners uh, when it comes to violence and threats of violence uh, that occur amid the unrest that, uh, that you're referring to. So the FBI is involved. Um, these are not isolated incidents, and as <clears> I said, they're part of a long history of abuses by the FBI against black and brown communities and progressive movements. These are real, the real oversight issues. They matter to my district, but there is real and justified skepticism of whether the civil rights of black and brown people are adequately protected. I know this from personal experience in the Ferguson uprising and from other protest movements <clears throat> that I have been a part of. That's why I asked you about the targeting of protesters the last time that you were before us, because it also included me. Um, but what my district is not concerned about is the Republican conspiracy theories and selective targeting of law enforcement agencies who try to hold their twice impeached, twice indicted cult leader Donald Trump accountable. <laughs> the Insurrection Caucus wants to use this hearing to score immediate political points. They want to invade oversight. They don't want to conduct it. But we're talking I'm about in. real issues, real reform that could actually save lives. So once again, I urge my Republican colleagues who claim to care about government overreach and weaponization to do the exact same. I yield back. 